be on the wet track. Um, Richo? I'm with Espiona, but my confidence is naturally uh, diminishing as the more raindrops fall. But she's she's such a class horse. She deserves a race like this. Um, I'd be really concerned if I had a ticket with Private Eye's name on it. As good as James McDonald's riding, I'm worried about him on a wet track. So how does it play? Does Chain of Lightning lead, or does, does Buffalo River do what he normally does? I mean, how do you see this playing out? I would expect Buffalo River will try and go forward and will lead. And hopefully he's had a lot of racing on his side. So that's his natural racing position, even though we've seen him ridden quietly uh, more recently. That was definitely not the best way to ride him. But I think the key for a lot of these runners is there needs to be a bit of speed injected into the race. Because if there's not, then it's going to be those horses up on the pace that will be able to utilise that inside gate and be really strong at the end. It was a heavy eight when Invader won the size. If I was legging up uh, Rachel King, uh, the rider of Chain of Lightning, I'd say to her, don't get involved in a battle with uh, Buffalo River. Don't eyeball him. Let him do his thing. You rate your horse the right way. She might be a length or two behind him and just travel through the ground. And your selection, Espiona, she can be really difficult to ride. We know she could lug in, lug out. So Nash has is, got his hands full, hasn't he? Uh, the, that outside rail might come into calculations Do you think here. he might go there? The Nash, the, the Nash might head that way. You never know because I'm sure she will uh, go back. NCAP's a great roughie in the race. Only a query whether or not uh, he can handle uh, you know, a heavy 10 track, but um, he's tough enough and fit enough. Bruce, what's your thoughts uh, in the All Age? There's a number of ways you could go. Have you got a, a real standout well, at this stage? Well, everything's, I'm sunshine in Paris. Uh, that, that, that's the horse that I've been wanting to get to this race. I think this is the right race for her. I wish it wasn't a heavy 10. I know the Invader thing. I, I'd like it to be a soft 7. But I, I, she's my selection. I, I've loved what she's done this time. In and when you look at her record, it's incredible. Yeah. You know, she was in the Everest last year before she went amiss after the Shiraka. I think she's a bit special. I yeah. do too. And yeah. a $3.9 million purchase as a uh, Magic Millions broodmare mm. purchase. And by gee, John Camilleri is going to have a lot of uh, fun with breeding from her. Rain tumbles down. I'm worried about what's going to happen with Hot Dub Time Machine after the last race, Bruce. <laughs> and I picked the bad day to wear the sun hat, I can assure you. <laughs> You'll be OK. We'll, we'll shield you from that. I think Daniel's still out there from last week. Don't you? <laughs> so that, that's all OK. But doesn't this race, I mean, it's grown in prize money. The Quokka's a bit of a... So they knew the Quokka might take a couple of horses away, so they upped the prize money. That's why they put the prize money to 1.5, because James Ross said to the Racing New South Wales, we're worried about the Quokka. We've got to... But this race brings these lovely different types of horses together, doesn't it? And then the Quokka moves a week back next year as well to give it a little bit of room too. So they've done a terrific job with the All Age, haven't they? That's back, back to 1,400 about 20 years ago and now up the prize money and we get these high-class horses. Seven individual Group 1 winners in the race before the late scratching of Golden Mile. It's a pretty good number. So they're loading, they're taking their time, there's a saddle adjustment to be made there. By the look at the mornings and cups, not that far away. It's worth a lot of money, the Mornington Cup, but it's worth more than that, as we know, because it's a ticket into a $5 million race later this year. So up comes Rachel. What a season she's having, Rachel, along with Jamie. And Cathy, of course, we shouldn't forget her back in the spring with her Group 1 as well. There's Jamie. Speak of the genius that she is, those beautiful hands of hers with horses. Up comes Magic Time. We, God, doesn't she look well? And the last of them, I think, amenable. There might be one more to come up. The scene is set for the All Aged. There's the lights on. We're all set. Ready to run. Racing now. Private Eye jump well together with Panda Snatch wide out. And Chain of Lightning is right there. But McDonald's going forward on Private Eye. Looking to cross the field. Gets a length clear from Chain of Lightning. Amenable the outside goes to second. Then Chain of Lightning. Sunshine in Paris. Bandersnatch out wide. Then Magic Time. Tis Invincible. Further back to Buffalo River. Then came in Cap Southport Tycoon. And right back to last now is Espiona. And second last is Air Man. So Private Eye taken to the front. Leads from Amenable. Bandersnatch caught three wide. Buffalo River's four wide. Followed by Sunshine in Paris. Chain of Lightning one off. Magic time, three out. Further back to end cap on a wide pass from Tiths Invincible. Then Bonus notches between them. Southport Tycoon well back with their man. And Espiona will have to come from last to beat them. This is a real war in the lead. Private Eye from Amenable. On the outside, Buffalo River with Bandersnatch. Four of them across the track. Sunshine in Paris is tracking up, waiting for a rails run. Chain of Lightning shown the stick as they come up the rise. Private Eye and Amenable head and head. Sunshine in Paris looking 
looking to come off heels but not sprinting. Here's Magic Time letting go of the good run wide out. Amenable at Big Odds takes the lead. Magic Time is the pursuer. It's Amenable in front from Magic Time. They'll fight it out. Amenable a half in front of Nick. Magic Time looms on the outside and went on by. Magic Time got up to beat Amenable. Private eye a distance away third. A gap to Sunshine in Paris. Then Bandersnatch, Chain of Lightning. Espiona with rails runs at the end. Further back, Buffalo River. Southport Tycoon, a gap to end cap. Tis Invincible, Wannis Notchers and Air Man a long last. Well, she was in the market, wasn't she? One of those mares that we talked about. For much of the straight, it looked like Chad Schofield and Amenable were going to pull off a really big upset. But she was the one horse in the straight that actually quickened or looked to quicken, didn't she? Yeah, she relished those conditions. She's the only one that actually loved that surface. By Hellbent, we've seen how well they go in these types of heavy tracks. What a ride, Chad Schofield. I mean, Amenable has not been going well at all, and he just went forward. He held him together as long as he possibly could. He would have thought at the top of the straight, maybe I might hold on, but it was just the talent of Magic Time in these wet conditions that was able to overcome Amenable. Private Eye, well, he was a bit of a surprise, and Sunshine, well, she's a, a distant fourth, but she still ran really well. Amenable at any sort of odds running second. Brilliant ride from uh, Michael D. He knows this mare so well. Graham Begg. Well, Graham and Sue were just uh, eventually had a, such a small stable in Ramwick. They made their way down to Victoria.